And tonight on The Daily Wrap, a horrific and deadly shooting in South Carolina ends with nine people dead. What was the motive? Was it a hate crime? And can we wait two minutes after these shootings before gun laws are called into question? Meanwhile, the Supreme Court rules Texas can refuse to issue Confederate flag license plates. Wise move or another example of free speech under attack? And are conservative media tougher on Donald Trump than they are Hillary Clinton? If the last few days are any indication, the answer appears to be absolutely. We discuss all of that, plus potluck and yay and nay. This is The Daily Wrap, live from New York City. And welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Joe Concha, joined by Sirius XM radio host and senior political columnist for Forbes. Whatever, yeah, all yes. those things. Right. <laughs> I'm working too hard. Yeah, yeah, seriously, Rick, yeah. you do stay busy. What's your secret? Uh, <laughs> do I need one? Do I have one? No, probably not. You're just a spry. <laughs> I certainly look yeah. my age, uh, you know. That's true. He's 52, I was fishing the there, way. guys. Come on. Oh, yes, no. yes. Oh, no, not, not at all. all. Not even close. I took the bait. He's 52. You can look at his Wikipedia page, trust me. Anyway, to his right, she is America's pundit and Philly attorney, Heather Hansen, wearing Carolina Panthers. I had a little tonight. mixing it up today. Well done, <laughs> joins us. And finally, editor of the wisdomdaily.com, Brad Hirschfield is here. Welcome back, sir, to Good you to as here. well. All right, let's get right to the daily download. And a 21-year-old South Carolina man is behind bars tonight, accused of shooting and killing nine people at a Bible study at a historic black church in Charleston. A hate crime investigation has since been opened. Among the victims, the pastor, Clementa Pinckney, someone President Obama knew personally. There is something particularly heartbreaking about a death happening in a place in which we seek solace and we seek peace in a place of worship. An emotional South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley calls it a very, very sad day for her state. We have some grieving too. And we've got some pain we have to go through. Parents are having to explain to their kids how they can go to church and feel safe. And that's not something we ever thought we'd deal with. Now, so many questions here tonight. Rick, we were talking about this before the show. Do you call it a hate crime? Is this a terrorist act? How do you? How would you define it? Well, you had some unique perspectives. Yeah, on it's this. it's fascinating. You know, I it, I'm always fascinated by how how we identify these things. And I was asking people earlier today. You know, would you call this guy a terrorist? And they went, No. He he committed a hate crime. I said, Well, you know, if he was a Muslim and he went into that church and did that. What would you call him? They said a terrorist. I mm -hmm. said, well, you ought to be thinking about that. Mm -hmm. He went in there. He was wearing patches that identified as pre-apartheid Rhodesia. Yeah. He, th we heard the things that, that he said to them. You know, you're taking over our country. Uh, you're raping our women. Of course he was a terrorist. I don't know why. I mean, you need to make a separation between hate crime and a first, uh, first degree murder because they have different ramifications and penalties. But a terrorist is a terrorist. And that's exactly what he yeah, was. Yeah, very estimation. unique point. Heather, uh, let me ask you a question. Is there a law on the books that would have, or if it were on the books, would have made a difference here? In other words, this, this was a handgun. It wasn't an automatic weapon or, or an assault rifle or assault guns uh, as after Sandy Hook that was proposed. So that's out. But this gun allegedly was gifted uh, to this 21-year-old who had uh, at least uh, obviously some, some serious problems, perhaps even some drug problems as well. Is there a law in the books that say you can't gift a gun to another family member? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of repercussions the father faces. Because there was a, a Supreme Court case decided just a year ago called Abramitsky, I think, Abramitsky, about whether or not you can do this. And if you're going to gift a gun, there are ways to do it. But you need to be able to fulfill the requirements so that guns can be traced. So that you make sure that whoever you give it to can't just go off and do whatever it is they might want to do with the gun. On top of 
that you cannot gift a gun to someone who couldn't buy a gun on their own. And there's very specific qualifications about what it is that allows you to buy a gun on your own. One of those things is you cannot have had a drug history. I'm, I'm being very general here. So the fact that this father gifted a gun to his son, if he did not appropriately say that he was doing so, and if he did not disclose any of his son's problems that may have felt fallen under those different requirements, the father may be facing some very, very serious repercussions. When you say serious repercussions, even a uh, jail time? Oh, for it's sure. It's five years just simply for violating the fact of t give, putting a material, materially false statement on the application. So if he didn't say that he was buying it as a gift, it's five years just for that. Add to that, if he actually bought a gun for someone who couldn't buy a gun himself, that becomes a felony and you're talking many more years. Brad, if we don't agree with with gun control, let's say let's say okay, gun control is not going to work. It's it's obviously um, it's not the gun that's firing itself, and there are enough guns out there. You can't can't control the problem. Then what can we do to prevent crimes like this? Because if you look at the U.S. compared to similar high income countries, we have twenty times more shootings than they do. All right, I'm not I'm not here in a soapbox or giving a speech. That's just a fact. So what do you do to prevent things like this from happening? So let's go slow, because I think, first of all, the impulse to want to figure out how to keep bad stuff from ever happening is real, but it's probably misguided. In a free society, bad acts will happen. And as much as we imagine we can legislate them all away, I just don't think it's true. I think what's really important, what Heather's raising, is that if we enforce the laws we do have better, we could probably make a material impact. I think the point that Rick made is crucial. If we began to ask ourselves questions about how we relate to these bad actors, it would also make a difference. But I do want to push back on one thing, because I think we give ourselves a little bit of a bad rap. And the President did it in his comments, and it did concern me. Can we hear uh, the President's comments first, sure. and then we'll, then we'll get Please. to you? Okay, uh, roll the President uh, in that third sock, guys. Once again, innocent people were killed in part because someone who wanted to inflict harm had no trouble getting their hands on a gun. Now is the time for mourning and for healing. But let's be clear. At some point, we as a country will have to reckon with the fact that this type of mass violence does not happen in other advanced countries. Right. So advanced countries is a funny phrase. If you look at the G20, there are three countries, Brazil, Mexico, and South Africa, that all have rates roughly four times ours of death by gun. I just think it's really important when we talk about what's an advanced country, what's not an advanced country. The truth is Donald Trump said some pretty horrific things about Mexican immigrants and was really taken to the woodshed for it, as he should have been. But I think when the president says, well, advanced countries don't have this problem, so what is that saying about Mexico? What is that saying about Brazil? What you does it say about Argentina that I has the you. same rate? I just think we have to be very careful, and I'm saying that as someone who thinks we do need better gun legislation. I do believe that gun control can be done without stripping the Second Amendment of all of its meaning. But I think that before people have been buried, knowing the human impulse to get a quick answer to make all the bad stuff go away, I just don't think that's how we're going to get there. Rick, I wonder if he was more referring to not the countries that Brad brought up, but but in Europe, you just and you know you bring up you know Paris, what happened just a couple months ago. I get that completely, uh, but for the most part, you don't see these shootings happening as much well, no, in you, European. You countries. don't have you don't have the level of guns in European countries. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. The problem is is that you know if we're going to be honest, the ship has sailed. You know you could you could outlaw guns today. And there are hundreds of millions of guns on the street that aren't going away. And if a bad guy wants to get them, unfortunately, the bad guy's going to get them. I, I was talking to my wife about this today. And uh, you, you make the, ex the, the perfect point because that's exactly what, what I said. It's almost like pot, right? I mean, you could get pot anytime you want it. You could outlaw it. Right, people, they're going to get their hands on it, and there's so many guns out there already. And even if it, they are outlawed, people are going to find ways to get them. The black market will just explode, just like it did with alcohol almost during Prohibition. Is that is that more. the analogy offer? Is that about right? I, I think that's about right. I think what we should be focusing on is mental health. I mean, this this we don't know enough about this kid, but just by looking at him, yeah. it seems to me that he's got some sort of, of a problem. Well, actually, there 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 is some stuff coming out tonight that he was on mental health drugs. But yeah. can I tell you what bothers me? You know what? Out of me, 
Why is it when it's a white kid who kills somebody, we immediately start finding out his drug history and the pills he's taking and how it could have impacted it? Anybody else, can you tell me what these the, these Muslim kids that we just arrested, because they were going to commit a terrorist act, what pills were they taking? None that we know. Nobody of. asked. Right. right. But, but Can we, if you don't mind, continue this discussion? Yes. Because yes, there is yes, a lot yes. to talk about uh, yes. uh, during our next, uh, after this next break. So uh, coming up next, we talk more about South Carolina, Charleston, the, the tragedy today. Stay right there. Mm -hmm.